Hold it up to the mic. <laughs> is that coming? It's not coming through the speakers, is it? Ooh, ooh. Make it stop. As if I wasn't uh, depressed enough, <laughs> Lauren found a reggae version of <laughs> our theme song. <laughs> you know I hate reggae, right? I did not, I didn't. Oh, you knew now. Uh, welcome to Here We Crow, episode 83. Welcome, 83. Ben. Hi, Dan. Hi, Lauren. Hey. And hello, Samuel. Hello, Daniel. Yes, it, uh, it would appear that after two rounds of the AFL season, it is doom and or gloom at the Adelaide Crows. Who knows what's going on with our team? We lost to Geelong by 19 points on the weekend. But first, Ben, tell I us about I'd like to let everybody know that I forgot to click record on audition. Sorry. So cool, 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 at least you've got it on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube's good. Yeah. Tell us um, some things about the number 83. So can you patch that up later? Can yeah, I'll patch something thing? in. Yep. Yep. We'll okay. just do the intro again. Yep. Hello and welcome. Uh, no, you can't top what you've done, Dan. So Thank no, you. Yep. Surely not. So. Um, yes, so in a world where it all seems so sad and whatnot, what's going to bring you up? The number 83? Some stats. So <laughs> we've got <laughs> our debut player, number 83, was Tim Cook. Tim Cook, right? Yep, <laughs> it was. So yeah, 90, yep. The guy from Apple. Cookie. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, you delve in and it, it turns into a little bit interesting. So we, 97 to 98, eight games, originally from Centrals. However, he was a physio and joined the Crows staff as a physio. Just like you, Ben, but on a podcast about the Crows. And I never joined the Crows. The podcast about the Crows. Yes. Was the joke. Yeah. <laughs> Very, yep, joke. Uh, <laughs> but uh, can I just stop you there for a second? Um, yep. The name Cook has not been very successful for the Crows, and I think this is a stat for you next week, how many total games played by the surname Cook. You've had Mike Cook, Tim Cook, Sujay Cook, and now we've got Braden Cook. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's been any others. So we probably need average games per Cook. Yeah, not many, yep. <laughs> if any. Too many yep. Cooks in the kitchen? Well, we'll see if I remember to do that, Sam. Sam, Dan, Thanks. I don't know. Oh, if, oh no. If you, I, I think didn't well, someone on Twitter say we couldn't name our own hosts? No, well, <laughs> pre- previous, they were right. I think it's been said by me in previous um, episodes, I'm a bit tired. Just see that and add a, add a fair bit tonight. Tonight so, or yeah, as a person? So. Ben, I'm on day two of a two-day hangover, so I feel you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yes, there is many a varied reason why I'm tired, but it's just how it is, and just get ready for some very slow word finding. As opposed to? Well, worse, worse. (laughs) What he's saying is he doesn't have any content for tonight. No, what I'm saying (laughs) is just just back off, let me do my job. So, 83 (laughs) is actually not a bad number. It's, can anyone remember our only ever showdown final? Yes. We might have won that by 83 points. Mm. Oh. It was a good so, time. That was a good night. Yep. I hurt my knee celebrating that. That That's sounds it. like you want a showdown, Sam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. True. <laughs> if anyone's <laughs> forgotten that, that was uh, the uh, It's Coming Back showdown. Uh, that was a dislocated shoulder very soon after the game. Yeah. Too many heavy high fives. Could not do those high fives. No. So, that 83.1, yeah. I think that was after, that was early days. That might have been Fruity Lexia days, I reckon. Oh. Yeah. Well... A little bit of detail on the game. So that was the game. Byron Pickett knocked out Brett, Brett, Brett Biglands um, just before half time. 
Apparently that sparked them up, made them pretty angry, and we kicked 14 goals to two in the second half. Mm. Nice. Scotty yeah. Welsh kicked four. All right. Goodwin and Perry kicked three. Pez. Yep. Sarge. So there you Sarge. go. Sarge. Legend. Now, uh, another significant win for us back in, you know, the good old days of 2020. Our drought-breaking win against Hawthorne was won 83 points to 48. Mm. Mm. Yep. I remember that game. That was the most pleasure I've seen in a win that year because we only got a couple. So, <laughs> But it was great. And... Player stats. So players who didn't play as many games as maybe they should have. So we had Henschel had 83 tackles and Seedsman had 83 games. Right. So Seeds. Seedsman. Seeds. Yeah. Um, and obviously we've got the born in 83. It's a fair list. We've got Scotty Thompson, Jacob Schubach, Hayden Skipworth, Nathan Bock, Brent Riley and Ben Rutten. Hmm. Couple of good ones, isn't Heaps. They? Heaps of them. Mm. And that's cool. a lot for the day. That's it for 83? <laughs> that's it. There wasn't a lot of gusto in them, I didn't feel. I He's think tired. Um, we're reflective of the whole Crows fan base at the moment, I yeah, feel. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. That's all right. We've got lots to talk about still. Much to talk about with the, the game itself that happened on Friday night. Uh, we're going to hear from lots of people on our new phone, the uh, burner phone. <laughs> <laughs> where, uh, my, ba- my partner's like, the hell's this burner phone you've got? <laughs> I'm like, it's on silent, never mind. (laughs) It's a bit of a sad thing, isn't it? Like we've actually got an actual phone for this. It's kind of weird. It's like having a work phone, being on call. Just remind me to get Sam to put some money from the Huey Crow account in my account (laughs) because to pay for (laughs) it. Yeah, pay for the the therapy that you're going to need from listening to it all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, No, it's been been all right so far. So far, so good. Um, Yeah, so we'll talk about all of that and uh, plenty more. But first. Music. Cool it's all about what's firing you up this week, Lauren. What's firing you up? Well, it's really the pump up. It's pump up. Oh, I've changed but it just then. Yeah, you just change it. But actually, pump up. it's actually fitting that you called it fire up because I'm not actually pumped up by much this week because <laughs> Friday was just awful and uh, I've had a pretty depressing week. So I'm going to say that I'm firing up and I'm firing up about the – Proposed development over the Crown and Anchor Hotel. <laughs> what the hell? Now, listeners, I implore you. I'm sure many of you have been to the Crown and Anchor Hotel once in your life. Now, obviously, I feel very strongly about this. You guys know that I mention the Crown and Anchor a lot because it's one of my favourite places to be. It's my second home, really, in Adelaide. And it's a lot of people's second home. So if you too would like to save the Cranker Hotel, uh, I implore you to please contact your relevant MPs Arts Minister Peter Malinowskis, get on to him. Please uh, start emailing and causing a fuss because the last thing we want is to lose one of the great cultural institutions of our city. That'll do. For anyone that does care, what what's do you have any insight into like like what is the percentage chance that this goes ahead? Um, like realistically, I uh, realistically, it's probably yeah, it probably it's is going to happen. Yeah, um, it's not done. Done. Yeah, uh, the development. Um, proposal has been put in and not approved yet so basically government intervention is going to be the way forward and hopefully trying to some i don't know some sort of heritage listing for the venue itself not just the facade of the building is ideally what would be the great thing to do now Mm. uh the cranker and the surrounding sites are actually owned by a development company so uh that in itself is also an issue so would well, it's, it's going to be a, a tough, tough road um, to try and save the pub, that's for sure. But it has been done before. Uh, mm. If anyone remembers, the tote in Melbourne has been actually saved twice from development. So it can be done and I hope that Adelaide gets around it because it is really important to keep that kind of thing um, and culture around. Yeah, definitely. Agreed. Uh, there is a Facebook group that is currently private. It's called Save the Cranker. Cranker with an A, which is a, I absolutely despise. <laughs> but if you happen to get invited or you can try and join that group, it's on there somewhere. But, yeah, join up and there's a lot of information getting around of what you can do and who you can contact. Otherwise, just uh, send me a DM on the old uh, Twitter. Nice one. Ben, is there anything firing you up or pumping you up, rather? Um. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Another watermelon. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Uh, no, I'm that tired. I'll say stuff you, Sam. I got nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the same boat. God, Damn. he's got a whole yeah, spreadsheet I'm here of vegetables and weights and everything. Does he? 
Nah. Oh. <laughs> You'll never know now, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that's um, pumping me up that I can think of at the drop of the hat was we um, had Roman from the SANFL <laughs> slash uh, Port Nuffy yeah. at the game with us on uh, Friday and he got me a free ch- uh, free hot chips. So he, he mm. did his job. But the, the sort of... Um, other side of that was he was quite drunk by the end and just slagging off our players, which I wasn't okay with. He was being very <laughs> complimentary early on. He was. That, that the faded. drunker he got, the worse he got. Yeah. So yeah. you're not invited next time, Roman, unless you uh, get everyone hot chips. Mm. And also thanks to Ben for the hot donuts and lining up for 45 minutes and missing most of the third quarter. I managed to miss the one part where we were doing well. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yes. Well, that that's it. That's what's pumping us up. <laughs> Speaking of the cranker, I went back there after the game on Friday. Oh, yeah? It was lovely. Well, yeah. yeah. It's just going to be so sad if it does go. Oh, it's just abs- it just absolutely gut me. Mm. I think it will just really kill a lot of, like, fun in Adelaide. Mm. Yeah. You know, the thing people don't realise, sorry, we've gone off on a bit of a tangent with this, but I think it's needed, is that, um, yeah, the, the way that that venue actually supports younger bands, um, up-and-coming bands, people probably don't realise as much these days, but they have – Packed out shows on Wednesdays and Thursdays um, of uni crowd and sort of younger bands, which can't really play anywhere else, Um, Mm. you know, so it's huge for that. There's not many other venues around the place unless you're doing like real DIY stuff um, that supports that kind of thing. And like Tom said, please save the $3 Wednesday scoonies. Yeah. That's it. Mm. You know, this is like generations of um, pub goers who are getting behind this cause because, you know, it's been a pub for 171 years. Mm. Do you think it's going to be student accommodation in 171 years? God damn it, no, it will not. Exactly. Anyway. And we don't want to know guess. any of the students that are there. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jesse, if you want another convenience store and bubble tea shop, get around it. Yes. I do like bubble tea. Mm. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> Let's talk about the game. <sighs> Uh, Do we have to? I don't want to. Yeah. I'm not forcing anyone to. We can finish up here. <laughs> ben would be pretty happy to finish yeah. up now. <laughs> that mind just to drive home and get to bed. And that's fine. <laughs> that will mean we don't have to talk about fantasy either. Yeah, that's so true. We'll just good. quick quick go at that. No, 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 no. <laughs> finish off. So, yeah, we'll uh, as home. most of you would already know, um, unless you just listen to our pod to find out the news, I doubt it, but <laughs> the Crows <laughs> lost to Geelong at home. We uh, thought... You know, maybe the Suns game was a bit of an anomaly and we weren't uh, going to be shit this year, but we were. Mm. <laughs> so hopefully this is, uh, you know, we get this out of our system early, but that 19 point loss felt like a 10 goal loss. Um, and, uh, you know, it doesn't get any easier after that. We head to Perth uh, this Friday. We're getting these prime time slots, so we've got to start making it work. Um, Frio have won two in a row. Uh, we've lost two in a row, so... Yeah, we're, right. going, we're just going straight into the game preview. Yeah, what are you doing, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> no, let's hear from our listeners now because we, we opened up the uh, here we crew phone last week. We're going and straight there. Yeah, I reckon right. we do. Yeah, let's do it. Like we did hear from you throughout the game, so let's just see how progressively worse this gets. <laughs> what the fuck was that <laughs> first quarter? Uh, the only thing worse than us was the umpiring. Jake Saligo kicked the goal and also saved two on the goal line. So it should probably be another 16, 15 points or whatever in the other direction. But fuck me, God, do we look bad. God, <laughs> Jesus Christ, bye. Yeah, I think we were, we were all there at that point, yeah, weren't we? we? Yeah, we were. Yep. Right, here we go. Studio, here we crow. What about baby John? Go to the get what we got two and then... Land one into the poster almost like it in half. I have got 80 bucks on him within the Coleman, and man, he does that. Uh, <laughs> boy, he's got a lot to do in the second half. Had plenty of the ball, but fucking sort it out. Uh, love you guys, especially you. Bother from the corner. Not bother. Okay. Bother. Uh, <laughs> Bit of luck for Bother there. Up we go. Here we go. All right. I don't know who the, any of these people are. This is by far the worst. First half of football, I've watched as I've played over for some time. I don't know what they're doing, but I'm having a meltdown on my own phone line. So, play this. Let's see how I'm feeling on Monday. Uh, the answer is not great. Yeah, I've got more. Uh, tell me what you think about that effort from the football club. Tell me what you think. <laughs> we invest our hard earned and I've 
like on Twitter. I'll tell you, we in that hard, and so someone like those boys to turn up and put in that effort, not good enough, not fucking good enough. They reckon that we've got a brand of football that'll turn up against final things. Nah, not good enough. Anyway, uh, love you guys. You're doing God's work with your podcast. Love you and uh, cheerio. Ta-da. Love you straight back, whoever that was. I do I'd hope say, that that I, lovely gentleman is enjoying hearing his. Uh, I voice. did say in the uh, greeting of the voicemail inbox to leave your name if you're not a coward. Uh, so we've just got <laughs> many cowards calling up. I've got two more. It's Here quite we go. a strange uh, mix of um, anger and Brody affection. Mm. Oh. Can go sit in the front row next week. <laughs> XOXO Nixie. <laughs> It's <laughs> a nice one. Oh, we got one more. Oh, this is uh, lengthy. Hey, here we go. This is Pete. Thanks yeah. very much for giving us a platform to commiserate together. <laughs> maybe one day celebrate together. Hopefully, eventually. Um, I'm going to do a segment called Pete Takeaway Pizzas. I'm going <laughs> to give you three pizzas to chew on uh, for each game. <laughs> so, in no particular order. First up is a cold, soggy, stale mushroom and kale pizza. <laughs> which is Brody Smith and Lockie Murphy. They both stunk it up last week against Gold Coast and Nixie thought inexplicably they'd be better this week. Well, in a lot of ways they were worse. If Smith and Murphy play next week against Fremantle, then surely we are tanking for draft picks. <laughs> Second pizza is the old faithful ham and pineapple pizza, which has just been reheated three times in Taylor Walker. It didn't look right last night. I think that back injury is still bothering him. We may not want to put him in a four-hour flight to Perth next week. So where's that going to leave our forward line? Mm. Uh, do we just have Burgess and Fogarty go small ball with Rankin, Rochelle, McHenry and Peddler? Maybe. And speaking of Peddler, the third pizza is the pepperoni ink loop Peddler. The person that thought Peddler was our hottest and most explosive attacking player would be best placed on a matchup in a defensive role on Tom Stewart. Well, they need to pack up their bags and leave the club. Yeah. Surely Keys or maybe Dawson could have been a smarter move on Tom Stewart. But I guess our club just isn't that smart at the moment. We looked panicked, we looked anxious, and we played dumb football last night, and I'm tired of watching it. On to Fremantle next week. Hopefully the pizzas are going to be a lot tastier next week. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Bye. Thank you. Domino's got savage, was, Pete. Pete was a lot more eloquent than I was at the start, <laughs> um, and I think we should get him to replace me on the podcast. So has Pete come with his own, like he's got his own segment now. Come with his own yeah, segment. He's just devised his own. this phone would be a good idea. <laughs> do, we, do you want us to make you a stinger, Pete? Um, message us if you do, and oh, yeah. I'll uh, make one like an old like a Pizza Hut delivery. Yeah, that would be good. I think yeah. we might. Oh, I can embrace that. I think yeah. that's a great idea. I like Pete's takeaways, Pete's. Content's writing itself. It now. is. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Takes uh, the pressure off us, but I think um, that was uh, you know he just it's topical. Ben Ben's going to leave. He's done. Yeah. Um, Don't anyone send in any stats because Ben will be really yeah, pissed. Ben, yeah. <laughs> but I did want to talk about a point that Pete brought up, um, and that was around the Luke Peddler and the Plan A, Plan B, which I don't think we've ever talked about Plan A, Plan B in the media before. So it's uh, you know first time for everything for the Crows um, this this season. Uh, but yeah, like. Uh, Lauren and I were discussing it on the way here and we couldn't um, sort of settle on what was plan A and what was plan B. I believe plan A was that one where they were ha- they had Peddler playing in a negating forward role against Stewart and then they s- it didn't work, obviously, so they tried plan B, which they haven't really explained, which appeared to be something like don't kick it near Stewart, but that also didn't work. Um, well, effectively, plan mm. A, you'd think, would be to kick it to where Peddler was and not where Stewart was. <laughs> yeah. Don't know. <laughs> Either way, it was really weird that me, um, Nixie came out and actually covered what essentially was a failed plan that was a horrible plan to start with um, when, you know, we've used Ben Keys in negating roles before and he was just wasted running around the field doing nothing. Um, it seems really strange that we didn't go down that path again of using Keys, but... Who am I to say? I'm not the coach. Mm. <laughs> it was just it was just weird all around. And the way that we entered the Ford 50 as well with that matchup happening was just strange. Like there were so many times where the ball just got bombed into him. Yeah. him and Well, there was that perfect time that him and Pedler were one-on-one and someone decided to kick it to like uh, – Pedler's not going to out Over Pedler's head. Yeah. Mm. No. And what's the bet he gets dropped now? Yeah. Because uh, – 
I'll tell you, folks, Brody Smith is doing the presser tomorrow. So oh, well, you we know caught he's it last playing. week, didn't we, with um, uh, yeah. Murphy? Yeah. They put him in the presser, take the pressure off having to select them this week. It's so. just interesting that they're doing that and putting people up for the presser for their game, given the, that well, they should be on, like, at least in the grey for the, uh, on the chopping block. It shouldn't be black mm. and white, oh, you're playing. Yeah. You know, they should be in the discussion about not playing this week. Yeah, 100%. I said to Dan on the way here, like, I can't see why they couldn't just debut Curtin away in free, Fremantle. I think someone mentioned this even last week. Mm. Debut him over there. Who cares if he's shit? Because it can't be worse than what brody has been dishing up. Mm. Save Brody, give him a week off, and then he can have his 250th on the night of gather round. You and wa- then he can hang up the boots. Or you, you watch us take Curtin just as a like, just taking him as on an a trip. emergency or something. Yeah, just yeah. so we can take. Who who did we do that to last year? We took yeah, him. As you used to call that the Chase Jones. Yeah, the Chase, Chase Jones special. Oh, that's right. yeah, that's so right. in theory, Pedler probably deserves to be dropped because that was a, a, hor- a horrible game. But he obviously got set up to fail in a way as well by being in that role with, mm. against Tom Stewart and not playing his normal game. Well, so Pete, Pete was right. Why didn't you just put keys on him? Like he has done that role before. Yeah. Just make, it doesn't really make much sense. But also, like, dropping Peddler would be so crows because, like, we always drop the most easy player to drop. Like, we're not dropping – why can't we drop Murphy, Smith, or um, – who was the other one that was horrible? There was another uh, – Chase Jones was pretty bad as well. Yeah. Like, but, you know, we're going to – we'll probably drop Peddler. Mm. And we dropped Shoal the first week even though he got 20 possessions and stuff. Like That was know. a bad game. It was a bad Shoal. game, but there was that. probably – just as bad players out. Like Murphy was worse. Oh, yeah. And yeah, he still got to play. Yeah. Isn't the worst part about this, though, that, like, I reckon we've talked about this before. I reckon Nuz has and probably Vardy Magic too. That how are the younger players going to get any confidence when they're the ones, I think Vardy put it as, walking on eggshells because they know that they're the ones that are going to get dropped. Exactly. Smithers can play a shit game and admit to it two weeks in a row and yet he doesn't get... He doesn't get dropped because I don't know if it's because he's two fiftieth or because he's a senior player, but you should. Be, isn't that showing them that you, would you think know? So. It's kind of showing them how you know. It doesn't matter if you're a senior player if you're not cutting it. You're not cutting it. How are they supposed to get confident in their game if they're not playing them properly yeah. or they're playing out of position? You know, I'm I'm pretty miffed at Daddy this but week. Yeah, but to your point, there's literally like three of the top, like straight up. Um, of leader, like players in the leadership group that probably should be dropped, and that's including those two that we mentioned and Fogg. Mm. Like he's been garbage for two weeks as well. Yeah, we, cons- we just can't drop him at the moment. We just don't have mm. anyone else. Are we concerned? Like we've raised concerns in previous years that the the sort of elder statesmen of the club are just sort of running the show again, um, and that sort of Nixie doesn't have a lot of say in what's what's going on here. This, the, I, I think that could be the case, but like yeah. To, to Lauren's point, we're not rewarding any of those players in the SNFL. Like, no, no. Well, there's, there's yeah. no sort of. Um, I don't think that it matters that they haven't played yet either, to be honest, because, mm. you know, they've obviously done the same preseason training. They know the game plan. Why can't they play? Yeah. Like, does it really matter? They, you know, someone like Nank has already played at AFL pace. He know he knows what's it, what it's about. Curtin needs to learn what that AFL pace is. So if you put him in next week, at least he gets a good run at that and he gets to see his family. Yeah. Like, I just, yeah, I just don't really understand it. And now that the footy media are also calling, you know, they're calling us out for playing this, you know, a boring midfield. And, you know, we've gone back to that, you know, solid lead crouch, whatever rotation. And I know Dawson is relatively new, but we're still not really like doing what we said we were going to do in the preseason, which was, Run those younger boy, uh, boys in. Well, actually, uh, sorry, I was just going to say, um, Jaden on the Discord or, um, thought some of Sam Berry's efforts um, in contests were great, uh, were pretty poor, in particular second efforts, like chasing. And actually, he was the third one that I was going to say should be dropped. Um, he was, yeah, like the slipping over in non-wet <sighs> conditions was just... Horrendous. He was so fumbly and there was a real critical – like I, I, I sat through the replay today uh, while I was working. I sat it on in the background because I was even, Not even the KO Mini? No, no, full replay. Wow. And there was there was a crucial time, I think uh, – when was this one? Anyway, I can't remember. I've got a lot of notes here. Um, but we just – he just there was multiple times that he had the chance to collect the ball when we were either a couple points down or even when we were in the lead – and just couldn't gain, just couldn't gather control of the ball, uh, and it resulted in us losing possession and it going down into Geelong's forward line. We we did 
we obviously did reasonably well in the like the heat of the contest on the weekend or on Friday night. But you can just see, like we mentioned last week, that spread is just not there when you've got Laird, Berry, uh, Dawson or Matt Crouch in there. Um, you know, we all love we all love Dawson and Dawson's obviously a gun, but these other three are just so samey. You just see them, one of them gets the ball, the other one doesn't have the burst speed, either the burst speed or the intuition but to find space. And the frustrating thing is all these recurring conversations are coming back up in round two of mm. like our one-dimensional uh, midfield of you know, Crouch, uh, Crouch, um, Laird and, and Dawson. And Dawson's been seemingly out of form the first two weeks as well. Mm. And, um, and yeah, like you had a Berry in and Berry's basically the same as well. And we, we just don't seem to be doing what we said we're going to do and rotating Rochelle and Rankin through yeah. um, and even Peddler to give us a bit of difference in there and move those guys out. Why aren't we doing that? Why are we back to this point where we inevitably are going to have to drop someone like Laird or Crouch? Like, it's insane. Chris Mills, 2018 midfield, 2018 results. Yeah. Can't uh, sort of, yeah, it's hard to deny I'd that. I'd take 2018 it? results at this point. <laughs> Uh, Tom was like, no line breakers, doors can break lines by foot, but that's about it. And that's the thing. And that's why we see, I was talking to Ben on the way here today, and you see when Saligo's around the ball, uh, you get that little, Just I, I find it really hard to quantify it, but you just there's this little extra spark when he's there. Like there's, there's something that he can do, speed, like movement that just others don't have in that midfield um, where he needs to be around the ball more. Old mate Russ, uh, one of my mates, has said, "How about fog in the middle?" I think we um, tried that God, back he's, in his he's early years. Slower than he's the a other bit two. Slow these days. Yeah. yeah, I'm just looking out for Lawrence Cobloaf here. We can, <laughs> just <laughs> get, <laughs> we can get fog in to just barrel I'm, through. Some I'm on people. two different chats with Digger. One's the family chat. I'm bringing Cobloaf. Um, I got some texts just as well on the phone line um, during the game. Uh, you reckon leaving Peddler as our deep lying forward option is working out well? Someone tell that walking Maltese and Nixie to put him in midfield. And then uh, from that <laughs> same person, <laughs> halftime thoughts. <laughs> Peddler is as dumb as he is handsome. Just a shocking last four minutes. Lazy efforts all round, creeping in through the team. One-arm tackles, half-hearted attacks on the ball, standing and ball watching, and I agree with that. Uh, thought clear standouts were Rochelle, Burgess, uh, Sligo and Rochelle. Dawson. Rochelle, I mean. <laughs> For some reason I was about Rochelle. In spurts. Oh, another thing. Was Lockie Murphy wearing his Apple Watch on Friday night? Motherfucker just out there getting his steps in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, Dean, um, our Essendon Nuffy, kept commenting about uh, Nixie being like, E- to sending emails during the game or something, like, mm. and he was yeah, having his he was headset on. Yeah, but at the end of the game, he had his um, headphones on still, like yeah. for a while. At the end, like why? Yeah, get out there and bloody do something. Yeah, we had some more messages as well. Uh, this is actually from Digger on the night. I'll be starting my own podcast dedicated to how many fumbles B Smith has had. All the best, Digger. <laughs> B Smith has had more fumbles than Weinstein. That oh. kick by Smith sums it up. These are all separate messages. Got what we deserve. Poor skills take you to a loss on most occasions. The the skills weren't just poor; they were diabolical. <laughs> what was going on? Yeah, so bad. Um, the other one that is Peb, Ped's a mimbo. What does that What does that mean? <laughs> a man bimbo. All oh, right. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Be. Yeah. I mean, he did try to. Uh, I'm going to try to justify his bad kick over Texas head, but it looked like he was aiming for an umpire that may have been a Crows player. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, that's well, why. This is why they should stop wearing the fluoro yellow yeah. at training. They need to get into the pink or something like that. That's well, the only way I can justify that bad kick. It looked like he was kicking to the leading umpire. Yeah. That wasn't his only major mistake at a critical oh, time as well. There was a chip kick from Walker that went about 25 meters. Um, 25 metres in the air too, so it really wasn't a difficult mark. Went slipped right, straight through his fingers. That was at a absolutely critical time when we had a run on. Can um, we talk a little bit more about slips um, marks? There was someone else that missed a few marks on the weekend. Who was that? Rob. Oh, yeah. <laughs> zero Yeah, but zero the thing marks. is, Rob, yeah, zero marks, but Rob, Rob was far from our worst on the weekend. Oh, I know. He, um, he did all right, but the, his tap work was actually pretty good. Yeah, it was, yeah. But his, the fumbled marks were just... Yeah, like, zero marks in a, in a, no a nice night um, from your ruckman is, is not good enough, no. Absolutely but it was not just zero marks. It was like literally getting first hand to it and dropping it, like yeah. at least a handful of times. Tom yeah, said, right. uh, needs more chat about Smith's shank. Might have been the worst I've seen. Yeah, 
Yeah, <laughs> Do you want to get to worse than that, does it? I think uh, we were listening to Five Double A on the way in, and Rowie said it's top three worst kicks he's seen. And he said the second one was him, <laughs> and the first one was Rob in a trial game, I think, kicking in Port it from Lincoln the, his first game. Yeah, kicking it from the square, and it went at right angles. Yeah, from went lateral square. movement. He's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I absolutely believe. So but Rob what? did kick a bit of a miraculous goal out of nowhere. Yeah, he did. Him. Yeah, yeah. Um, one slight positive. Of yeah. from the game, watching the replay today, it felt like we were like we should have won that game when we hit the front again in that third quarter. We should have we should have kicked away there. Like we had all yeah. the momentum, we absolutely fluffed it with a couple of, you know, from all the I don't know whether one of the mistakes that we've already mentioned from a few key players like Barry and uh, Pedler is the, is the reason here. But there was a key point when we hit the lead that we could have. Uh, I think it was Barry. It was one of Barry's ones moving forward. Um, and I feel like at that point, if we'd managed to just kick a couple of extra goals there, that we would have had the game on our own terms for the rest of the day. But Geelong kicked two goals in a minute after that, and we just looked lost. Um, so in in a slight positive, it was kind of one of those games that I, I sat there today watching that it didn't feel like that at the ground. But I think if I was watching that game at home, I would have just thought, oh, we're going we're gonna to win this now. And we clearly didn't. So I think that... While that's positive, it's also like extremely frustrating because it's oh, like, 100%. like yeah, yeah, I agree it's like you. exactly like last year. It's one of these like both the first two games are games we could have won, mm. and we'll look at the end of the year and go, oh, if only we had those other two wins. Well, we all said before this game on Friday that if we're a good team and we're as good as we think we are, we should be beating Geelong at home. Yeah, we didn't, so we're not. And we're not as good as we easy. think we are. It doesn't get any <laughs> easier now either. No, no. But at all. I just want to press this button. Oh, look, uh, it should be a uh, rip snorter. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, now Dan's near the buttons. <laughs> yeah, momentum killer. It was. We we had all the momentum there uh, numerous times actually and just absolutely fluffed it. It was just so frustrating. Mm. Yep. Oh, look at him sitting there wanting yeah, to Yeah, I'm stats. like, it, we better let Ben talk. He's waiting so patiently. Has he's he got, got the camera on him for no reason. Feeling attacked for just sitting here <laughs> quietly. Oh, just you, add something. You guys obviously have a bit to vent there, and um, it wasn't that easy finding a little uh, break in uh, <laughs> chatting away um, very violently. So, um, oh, come on, get on with it. So, I guess my thing about the game was not so much. Not everything was terrible, um, as Sam said. Um, we, it was a game we could have won. Um, stats wise you'd look at the stats and you'd think oh yeah Crows have done alright they've won disposals their inside 50s were 66 to 53 they had 27 shots on goal to 24 they won clearances 47 to 38 their hit outs were 52 to 36 so a few you know, rel- you know not always key but often they are quite key stats but didn't get us the uh, the win. I think the biggest problem we have is our transition moving forwards. We don't have a connection with our forward line at the moment um, and uh, oppositions are having an easy transition out of our forward line. So I think I don't feel like our whole system and everything is broken. I think there's a couple of key things that we need to tighten up on and we'd actually look like a good team. We've we looked like a good team well, for tonight, like numerous we've talk, times. We've talked about a game that sounds like we lost by 75 points. We lost by 19. I think mm. it's the disparity of what we expect to what we got. Um, we, we Yeah, so I don't know. I don't, I'm not as doom and gloom about it. We're two games in. It's a bad first two games, but we've still got a lot of games to come. Um, I agree, though, yeah, increasing our boldness with picking and sticking with younger players will, will hopefully, one, it'll bring more faith for the younger players and it'll bring some more dynamic movement of the ball, which is what we're needing. Like The big thing I think that we are looking like, we're looking very self-conscious about the way we play. Players aren't playing free, dynamic football as a team. Players are playing like, all right, I'll be the one who saves us this game. Mm. That's where you get things like Pedler kicking way over Tex's head because he's like, well, this will really lift the team if I kick a 60-metre goal. Mm. Even Jordan Dawson did it in one of the... He had multiple options short and he went for the 55-metre goal. Mm. Our players, I think, are self-conscious about the fact that they're not doing as well as they're expected and that almost makes it worse. It's a bit mm. like when I swing a golf club and I'm thinking a lot about that shot, I'm going to shank it straight in the water. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you just relax yeah. and let it flow, oh, let you it still flow. shank it into the water, no, but you no, feel better no, about no, it. No. If I don't think about <laughs> it, I'll get a crap score, but not as crap a score as if I really think about <laughs> it. So, um, 
I don't know. I I think it's – I don't feel like it's terminal. I think it's something we can turn around. But it's definitely not the way that we seem like we should have been, you know, starting this season. We talked a lot about how, oh, you know, we've – We've worked out our game plan. Now it's more about scenario-based training. I think we might need to go back to some more game plan <laughs> practice. <laughs> Definitely and, some, and selection. Because we're not playing the game plan that was so successful for us last year. No, That's the other, frustrating other thing. Other teams are playing the way we played last year. That fast transition, get it into your forward line really fast. We're not doing that. So... <laughs> Yeah. I said to Dan in the car, Ben, I was like, have they changed the game plan a little bit and the players just don't know what they're well, doing? The, the tweak they said is, like, last year they were really happy with scoring easily but we were letting in too many points. I think maybe now they're focused too much on stopping the the opposition <laughs> win, kicking points. But even so, I'm not sure what we're focused on because the transition is so much easier against us at the moment. Mm. Mm. We know we're on when a team is kicking out of our 50 uh, metre line and they just have to keep chipping around or kicking down the line. At the moment, they're able to just kick over our defenders. Several times, even just momentum, they were kicking down the wing. We went for a marking contest, let it go over the top of us and then they kept running into their forward line. So, mm. yeah, I th- for me, it's really we should be able to transition and we should be able to stop the opposition from transitioning and that's not what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And we did see a lot of points uh, at the game this weekend, uh, but the goal umpires didn't uh, because they reviewed almost every single one of them. <laughs> Some very crucial decisions they had to make there, yeah. wasn't there? So. <laughs> we really needed to know if it was no score. My favourite one out of all of them was like the third one where they hit the behind post and they went up for a score review and the, the result came back in like 0.5 of a second because they knew and they were like, don't send this up to us, you idiots. <laughs> <laughs> and in summary of my little uh, rant... Um, I've, there's stats from the first two games of the season so far. So our strengths for contested possession and tackles, we're ranked first in the competition. Our deficiencies, our shot efficiency, and I get confused what shot efficiency, goal efficiency. Basically, you get in your 50 line and you either score or kick a goal. We are last, so we're 36% at the moment. Last year we were you know, shooting up above 50 First is currently Port on 67, but they've played nobody, so stuff that. Um, <laughs> goal efficiency, 16% for us and last. Our opposition this week, Frio, is first on that. They're, they're kicking a goal with 31%. Um, our disposal efficiency is 68 and a half, and that is 17th. <laughs> so only beating Richmond, who are only like 0.3% of a percent lower than us. Um, and our marks inside 50, which we were really good at last year, just... You know, finding someone coming in to kick a goal is last. So, Ooh. so it, to me, that screams we're just not finding easy transition possession, and we're, we've got no connection with the forward line. These are some fun stats, Ben. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> um, I just want you guys to know that uh, someone very sensible has joined us in the chat. I don't know how a to sensible, join the chat. A no. sensible crow uh, has arrived. Um, but actually, Britt has said, Ben, can you stop being so reasonable? Yeah, that's fair, actually. He's reasonable crow. <laughs> we got sensible and reasonable. Yeah. When do, you're when copping we, a bit for being um, too sensible there, Ben. When should we open up the phone slightly lines? Slightly flat effect <laughs> crow I am. <laughs> no, it's going to be reasonable and sensible podcast. It's the spin-off of both our podcasts. Look, <laughs> all right, all right, I'm going to open up the phone lines. Uh, I reckon... If you want to call and you want to talk about something that's getting your goat, you should ring us right now. I'll know? tell you the number yeah, when I stop knocking. I over need to put my the number on the uh, on the actual stream. I'll put it in the chat. Oh four nine eight seven three one six one three. Call us right now, and we'll get your thoughts. Dan, do you have any more to say about the game? I was just going to say, just on the topic of Port, which Ben touched on, is that. It must be nice making the finals one year and then getting to play like two of the bottom four prospects of the next year. One at home, the bottom team at home and then Richmond away. Be a nice way to start the year, wouldn't it? Mm. Mm, 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 mm. I can't wait to talk about uh, selections later. Can we talk about votes? Let's do some votes. My votes are so boring. Yes. We don't have a button for votes. Lauren got confused with that last week. Damn. Yeah, sorry. All right. <laughs> it's fair. 
Uh, Sam, what are your votes? What oh, are your three, two, one? Most boring votes ever. Oh, I I'll, t- I'll try to top you. Three Dawson, two Saligo, one Rob. Three Dawson. Wow. Like, who else do you give it to? Well, we'll see. Ben, who have you got for votes? Are you ready? Uh, yep, I'm semi ready. So, um, I did give three votes to Crouch. He's doing his role, but is he the only one? Um, anyway, 37 sessions did all right. Um, quite a high disposal efficiency. I did give two to Dawson. 26 possessions, he was getting our metres gained. However, for him, 61% disposal efficiency is a lot lower than you'd expect for Dawson to do. Um, I gave a cheeky little one to a cheeky little man in Edward Henry. Um, very busy when he came on, and he did. He was instrumental in a very, very nice setup to a goal in that second half. Do you give him a vote just to annoy me? No, I thought he did all right. Yeah. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with you, Sam. Jeez, it's not all about you. <laughs> Lauren, what did you have? <laughs> um, three for Crouch, two for Burgess, one for Saligo. Nice. And I also went with Matt Crouch uh, for three. Uh, I had two for Mitch Hinge and one for Rory Laird. Laird. I definitely don't have this button set up. Laird. Hi, I'm Tyson Edwards. You're such a quiet, quiet Should you have for the Tyson Edwards Quiet Achiever, Samuel? Lauren, you need to say live and interactive every time, <laughs> <Sorry>. please. <laughs> I'll try and remember. Uh, I put Burgess in here. I didn't know else to put in here. and He had a great first half. Yes. I concur. <laughs> ben? Uh, Saligo. Looks exciting when he gets a chance in the mids. Uh, needs more. Yeah, I'd like, yeah, that's why he's quiet because he's not in the midfield <laughs> enough. <laughs> that's right. Correct. <laughs> True. Lauren? Uh, I gave it to Rankin this week. Quiet two goals. It was quite two goals. I also went with Sam and did Burgess. Baby John? Quiet two. Yeah, I like Baby John. That's a good nickname. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't come up with it. Mystery prize time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jaden said, can we have an honest discussion about Lady? It's getting bad now. Yeah, I agree. I don't think he should be in the midfield. He needs yep. to be the one that gets kicked out. We can go back. Yeah, I, I would definitely actually would kick him out before Crouch. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Crouch put him back to so half back. We need someone... Like him at half back, I think. Yeah. But I the club does agree. not seem to be talking about that, do they? They do not. No. Mm. Mm. No, not at all. No. Mm. What are we doing mm. next? We're, getting, we're stopping talking about this game because it's depressing. Let's yes. have some fun. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that fun entails yet. No. What are we doing? <laughs> Fog watch. Yes. So where is it? Where is it? Wait, go. Huh. I don't know how to you do this. How to do it. What are you trying to do it for? I don't know. Not that I know either. <laughs> Well, I'm going to have to go back to does he know how to use them as that um, that stinger because the jury's out, I think. I, personally, I don't, it's up to anyone else on the pod, but I think um, the jury is definitely well and truly out on Fog. I want still want him to be an absolute star, but for me, he is too in and out of games. He's For me, he hasn't started well this year again. Um, like, When is it going to happen? When's the penny going to drop? When's he going to be... That well, player. I think the question is: Is it the supply or is it the demander? I don't. Know. I don't know. Mm. I, like I thought, the supply to him wasn't as bad this week as it was the week before. Like mm. clearly, the week before he had barely any chance. Mm. But uh, in general, we're not we're not going into our forward fifty with speed. We're not giving free and easy chances to our forwards. So he still did. Tell. He did a couple of nice things this week, though. Like there was, yeah, definitely a good goal that he kicked. But that howler from on the run um, that <laughs> hit the post. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not very fog-like. And again, it looks like someone who's doing things consciously, not someone yeah. who's just, you know, playing the game as they know they can. Yeah. Has this, uh, you know, psychologist we've got in, <laughs> like, muddled their brains up? I did uh, uh, mention I that. You I'm were like, talking about me as a psychologist. Though. I did mention <laughs> that on, on – I'm just going to call it Twitter because X sounds fucking stupid. <laughs> but um, I did mention that. Like, is this another case of us getting a psychologist in that's just fucked with our players' brains and they can't play anymore? Because, <laughs> like, it seems like that, doesn't it? Well, you know, F- Fog and Filthy went to that uh, – what was it? The mindset coach. And maybe she's undone all the mindset work. Yeah, maybe have they have they are they still around or did they go with Rahili? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> well, you mentioned Rahili and 
he is he was our forward coach and we had great connection last year. Yep. He's now for the opposition we just played against. Um it's starting to feel like he was a pretty big loss. Yeah, definitely. So yep. And it hurts yeah. that much more when you see um to your <laughs> point. Oh, hang on, oh, we've got a call. Oh, the switchboards are lighting up. Interactive. <laughs> you are live on the air, whoever you are. No, they're this not, because it is, didn't turn the Bluetooth on. <laughs> Who's this? Is this? Who is this? Hello? It's, hello, it's Kate. Oh, <laughs> Kate, hello. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Welcome. I saw no one else was calling. I was like, right, I'll call. Oh, <laughs> thanks, God. See, Kate, Thank- the co-host and saviour. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for interrupting. Good. Thanks for interrupting one of my random thoughts that was going nowhere. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. No, that's fine. Before you before you vent, Kate, because I know you've saved some stuff up for us, but do you have any <laughs> thoughts on fog while we're in the fog watch segment? Oh, good question. I like. Yeah, I think I think Dan was just saying this. Like he has had his slow starts, and I, I think he suffers when the teams suffering so mm. yeah I I think um, you know probably my main rant is the forward line and I think he's just um, obviously part of that and obviously not getting the kind of delivery and I think not even the kind of like set up in the forward line that is going to be I just don't think it's I don't think there is a setup in the forward line that's basically what I think. What's, what's going on with uh, old mate uh, bad cop Burnsy yeah, he's been to be Scott the Burns. Coach. What's going on? Yeah, what else mm. have you got? What What else do you want to talk about, Kate? I'm sh- I reckon you. I reckon you've got a few little pockets of uh, genius up your sleeve. <laughs> no pressure. Um, Is this the rumor? Look, rumor. Oh, I can. Yes, I did. I did. Hear, I never hear news, and I heard a rumor just some random in my row the other night. Um, I mentioned Rahili to my mate that I was sitting with, and he sort of popped his head over and said that. Um, his his cousin is good mates with Rahili, something like that was one of those connections. And mm. um, apparently he would have stayed if the Crows offered him a big enough contract. And I think by big enough, he meant long enough. Oh. So I, for one, was pissed to hear that at like half time. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. So, that's true. That's concerning. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think, I think, well, I you know, there's time, but I think it's, so far, our forward structure is just not existent. And, um, you know, I, I again, I think I mentioned this in my essay that Sam kindly read out last week, but I was looking at the forward line, obviously, at the ground this time. And I felt like there were big players trying to bring the ball to ground and just uh, probably good four or five metres away were any smalls you know, who weren't picking it up. And, that just frustrated me to no end. Mm. I understand you need a balance of like inside and outside, but the outsides have got to go inside sometimes and it just was not happening. No. Agreed. Mm. Agreed. Mm. Yeah, it was mm. very hard yeah. to watch. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I won't use up all the call time, but I have two other things I will say. <laughs> One is that if I hear a crow, if we lose again this week and I hear anyone from the crows, Say, or oh, there's still this many games in left in the season. I will rampage, <laughs> <laughs> like because exactly as Dan said, like we're, we're going to look back at the end of the season and be like, gee, wouldn't it have been great to win a few of those early games? Because then we wouldn't be in the position we're in. So I don't want to hear that again. After we this don't week. need a repeat of last year. I think yeah. most of us at the exactly. start of the year when we did our predictions, we had us at least winning those first two. So it's going to skew our predictions quite a mm-hmm. bit if we don't start winning some. Not bozzer. Absolutely. No. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Spot on. And I have a, I have a just to finish. I have a bad for you, Sam. Oh yeah, Ooh. go for it. I didn't realize this until the weekend, but because of gather round, Port have three home games in a row. Oh <sighs> yeah, I heard that we yeah. Jeez, no. after such a tough start to the year as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> 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 the only anyway. positive I can take yeah. out of that is if they somehow bomb at the end of the year, Ken's going to have his head on a plate, which is, you know, the usual oh. programming. Yeah. Um, and just checking, Lauren did let you know Sorry. that we're charging these calls at $4.95 a <laughs> minute. <laughs> 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 oh, dear. <laughs> Sorry, Lauren. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> well, before you All go, right. also, we've got Sam's probably going to be bowing out soon. So we may be looking for more than just a caller in her soon. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. I'm always 
available. I'm very boring, so I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're always here. Kate's in. Thank- <laughs> Thanks for ringing us, Thanks Kate. Thanks for calling, Thanks, Kate. Kate. Well, Bye, hopefully guys. we'll talk to you again next week. And it was good to see you at the game. Yes, it was. Very good to briefly cross paths. <laughs> All right. Ciao, Take care. ciao. Bye. Bye, guys. See, that's how easy it is, folks. Live and interactive. You can call Here We Crow. <laughs> We're not like five double A. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not oh, gonna, here we oh, go. Oh, that's a message. It's FaceTime call. We oh. don't even have. We don't even have like a. Um, you know how you know when you call five double A. I assume they have you waiting in the background. No, you just come. Oh, in no into, green room here. You just come straight in, <laughs> mid conversation. I'm so not going to. I'm not going to read them out. But the chat is very funny at the moment, talking about growing cars going for two. Which and a half uh, I'm on the night. wrong chat line. Which which oh. channel am I meant to be? Nah, in? it's not. It's not in there. These guys are just talking on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Oh. I'm calling back the caller. Oh no. Who is it? They gonna actually answer? They're I don't gonna. know. This is. Uh, they did hang up pretty quick. Champagne there might be someone thought. wondering about our energy um, account and whether we they can save us some money. Imagine it was just a prank. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and I didn't want to borrow it. Sensible Smith retirement, or is he just going to come on and bang on about his two fiftieth game to make sure he gets picked this week mm. tomorrow? Going by the email. He ain't retiring. Yeah, as much as uh, that was our first thought. Oh, Kate said that was her, Lauren. You're trying to call her back. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> Weird. Sorry. Uh, all right. What's um? What's next? Uh, Do we, we, this is know. this feels a lot more unplanned than even usual for us. I like know. Having, we've having we've live lost the plot. Callers. Yeah. I'd, I'd have to say I'm getting uncomfortable with how many variables we're bringing into each episode. Oh, I like it. It's good. <laughs> it's scary. I like it's routine, good. Sam. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, You're So Kane? You're So Kane? Yeah. We can do You're So Kane. Except we're going to say... You're so keen. I bet you think this part is about you. You're so keen. So keen. You probably think this part is about you. Don't you? Don't you? Now, usually we're bagging Kane, but unfortunately this week we're uh, we're on board. Oh, uh, <laughs> makes me sick. <laughs> I, I, every time I think of, I think of that sound that Doja Cat makes in that song, ugh, ugh, ugh. Well, yeah. look, uh, Kane uh, this week has, you know, he's been one of the many media people that have come out. Um, what's that noise? Got more roadworks. Oh, Jesus, it's fucking annoying, Christ. isn't it? It's all happening at Here We Crow. Anyway, he Carry has. On. He's come out again this week, bagging the crows. But to be honest, he's got a point this week. And he said everything that all the other media people are saying and uh, I actually agree with him. Now, the other uh, thing he did this week was um, he took <laughs> he took on uh, – who was it? Was it Jimmy Bartell? No, no, it was Joel Selwood. Uh, Joel, was it Joel Selwood? Joel Selwood and, and Cochin. Trent Cochin on the other channel. Oh, Cochin, okay. Like Talking Footy or something. Um, well, and their segment I, – I, what I want to say – what I do want to say is it shows that nobody is out of um, – Kane's target for, you know, shit country. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> if anyone's wondering, I did tell Henry tonight's episode was not one to listen to. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Now, yeah. I'm an idiot and I haven't got the link up to uh, play the funny thing, but um, I'll post it on the, t- on the Instagram yeah. or something and you can watch it. Yeah. Anyway, it was pretty funny. So, one, I agreed with Kane this week and then I laughed at him. This is the worst week of my life. Yeah. Are All right, that was the worst segment ever. You're not playing anything? I can't because I've got like three different phones and only one's linked up to that and it doesn't have anything on it and it's just like too hard. Can we describe it at least? So, you've got... Um, <laughs> this is good. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> yeah, it was Trent Cochin. On, Sam. Trent Cochin and his his body superimposed over the top of <laughs> some footage of a game talking about what happened in really obvious terms that you can see with your own two eyes or four eyes if you're me and Ben and Sam. I'm just going <laughs> to post the link in the chat because and then it's awful. It looked like their arms were cut off as well. <laughs> so Kane's gone and had his go at doing the same thing with his arms even more cut off. It's just his, his like monotone uh, speech and the, the player kick, kicks the ball to the other player and then he handballs it and then they take a mark and then they kick the ball to the other player. It was very good. Anyway, this is a terrible segment. Moving on. Oh, who's this? Thanks for saving us, whoever this is. <laughs> Hello, here we crow phone live and interactive. <laughs> oh, no, the, the blue dude keeps... 
Hello, here we cry for live and interactive. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Is this Digger? <laughs> it, it's M- Mavis here. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Hi, Mavis. Hello, Mavis. Look, I just, look, look, I just want to talk about Brody Smith and Rory Lee and, and Brad Crouch. Oh, bless they're them. All, they're all just, look, you need, we need to leave them alone. They're doing their best. The they coaches are. are doing their best. Best, they're all doing their best. I've heard this call before. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, sorry. Wait, wait. Oh, it's me. It's oh, right. oh, sounds like yeah. a sensible man. Yeah, it does. Fucking hell. I'm just copying on 5AA. Uh, just what the hell have you that. done to Mavis? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Hey, no worries. Mate. No worries. Just a quick chat. Um, yeah. yeah. Fucking now, hell. Naz, you, you put together um, some really, uh, well, sensible thoughts uh, on, I loved on, on X, formerly known as Twitter. Oh, yeah, that was good. Uh, yeah. Can you even call the them game. tweets anymore? Because I like calling them tweets. You can call them Xs. <laughs> That's so <laughs> shit. <laughs> you did, a really, good, you did a really good X yeah. on the weekend, Naz. <laughs> oh, I did. <laughs> and um, you've also got the blue tick, so you could make it lengthy. And uh, I approve How of this. How the hell did he get one of them? He's paying for it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, well, I have I have Patreon, and uh, I feel bad. I'm going to have to cancel it because I don't actually post it. Nah, don't cancel it. The, nah. the people will still want to um, pay you and uh, hear your. Well, outlooks. if they want to pay me some sort of money, um, I do have to. I do still pay all the actual, you know, uh, extra stuff for keeping the podcast on. Oh, I've got my six-year-old son giving me a cuddle before bed. <laughs> G'day, there mate. I hope he's no, not I'm listening not. to us. He, um, he watched the first quarter and then he got upset. Oh, uh, so me too. To um, <laughs> yeah. All right, well, Nuz, do you want to lay it down? Lay down the facts for us. Yeah, look, I mean, I came out first. I don't want to, you know, uh, say that I'm better than Hodge, Bartel and all those guys. But, um, <laughs> we think you are. Yeah, but I did say it first. No, it doesn't matter. Look, the point is if the VFL media machine can watch – half an hour of the Crows football and say, that's not fucking working. <laughs> then what are we trying to do? The problem is, and I'll tell you exactly what the problem is, we're too chummy, we're too reliant on the same people, and we need someone with a backbone to go in there and say, no, that's bullshit, you're playing shit, do it for the team, do this, do that, try something different. Mm. So the, it's, you know, it's admirable that... You know, we can say, well, let's back in the boys within the squad. That's fine because that's what good teammates do. But what are we trying to come 10th or are we trying to finish in the top four? Mm. If things, you know, like, so that, that's where we have to kind of draw that line. And I think we just need that ruthless streak. We've, we've done the healing part. 2020, let's not forget, we were a basket case. So, mm-hmm. hey, we could be North Melbourne right now and just still be shit forever, <laughs> even no matter how many picks we get. Mm. But we're not. So Nick has brought in really good culture, but I do think that it's that we need the next phase of the evolution uh, to come through and that whether that be changing the assistant coaches now because Nick's has been he's in for another two and a half years or whatever it is, you know, it happened with Richmond, you know, perfect examples of, of changing assistant coaches to make it work. It's happened in countless other examples. I can't think of the top of my head. So I just think we needed that ruthless edge and to be able to say to people, mate, we can't have you in the midfield. You play here. If you can't play there, then we'll have to not play you. We kind of did it already last year with Crouch, but mm. then we went, mm. we've gone back. Like almost back to the future, like again yeah, to 2022. Yeah. It's bizarre. And nothing against Crouch because, look, he, he is playing better. He looks freer with his body. He's kicking forward now. You can see that he's, he, he doesn't do that backwards handball instinctively, constantly, which drove people insane. But the, the modern-day football team, if you look at all the other teams, all 17 other teams, you look at the midfield balance. And if you just go as simple as inside, outside, mids, Every team has one inside mid, one inside outside mid, and one outside mid. Mm. And I, I, I did my own research. I could not see any other team that had two inside mids. Mm. You can have mids that play inside, like Clayton Oliver, but he still gets you 600, 700 metres gained. And so that's where Crouch and Laird combined lets us down. Yeah. So, you know, it, we, we just need more dynamic in the midfield and that's one of many things, I mean, I could go on about Smith. I mean, you know, hey, did you hear about Smith? 
apparently they're all talking on five double A and all that, saying that you know he'll he'll be right for his two fiftieth. So I don't think he's getting dropped. No. Oh, he ain't. Soon. He ain't. No. Was, uh, they basically confirmed it in their email about meter inquiries Shit. today. So. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, the, what the fuck are we doing? Hey, like, Nuz, Nuz, I'm in a real ranty mood right now. I'm just I'm fucking over it. Do you want just me to – how's this for a nightmare-inducing ju- fuel, Nuz? What if uh, what if uh, Rory Sloan was fit? Oh, God. <laughs> I was just going to say – I, I love Sloaney. Yeah, I just want to see him in the back of a highlight. Not, you know, <laughs> same as In Smith. front of a highlight. Yeah. Like, um, just, Back to your point, Naz, like about the sort of back to the future, or whatever. Um, you know, it's almost like they're, they're trying to appease the fans who were all up in arms when we wouldn't play Crouch last year. And, you know, he came in and he played well at the end of the year. But that's not the point everyone was trying to make. Everyone's point was Laird and Crouch in the same midfield doesn't work. And yet they've gone back and they decided that's what they're going to run with to start mm. this season, which is a line in the sand season for a lot of reasons. Uh, yeah. It's almost like the Crows are defiant against that fact and they're like, okay, well, we don't care if it's a line of the sand season. We're going to re-sign our coach early. We're going to play Laird and Crouch in the midfield and, you know, let's see what happens. Hey, uh, well, it, has, look, it has only been two games. Yeah. Let, let's not forget that. We've got a, a really good, interesting battle against. So, like, the Geelong game, I think, was a, almost a bit of a write-off. Like, a lot of expectation. They had a, a down midfield, a lot of outs. We probably went in thinking, you know what, we got this easy beat and a few things happened. You know, Crouch and Laird got a lot of the ball. It's going to be very interesting to see how Crouch and Laird combination go on a really big oval, the same size as the MCG, against Caleb Sarong, who's averaging like 40 touches at the moment, mm. as well as um, other very good outside midfielders in you know, Luke Jackson, basically, the Ruckman midfielder, um, Hayden Young and... Brayshaw. So it's going to be interesting to see how, because we're not going to change it, right? No. Like we're, we're too stubborn to. So we're going to see an example again. They might be working through things at training. We don't know that. We don't know behind the scenes what's going on. You know, if, if anyone can play outside, it's going to be led. But the natural games are to play inside. And and I'm sick of people saying, oh, but, you know, we need people inside. Right. How quick well, – here's a question. How quick does it take to get from the midfield – into your full forward. How many seconds? Oh, is this me is or an the, yeah. AFL player? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you. No. <laughs> AFL stand. <laughs> right. So the answer, like, if, you, if you've got a full break, like Paddy Danger, if you were to get stuff, let's say it, you know, seven seconds, right? But that seven seconds allows people to run 50 metres defensively. Mm. So if we have the ball, right, and then we look backwards, that's a second. And we handball to another guy, that's another second. Handball to another guy. All of a sudden, you're talking about something that could take, should take seven seconds, turning it into 13 seconds. See where I'm getting at? Mm. And that allows the opposition time to get their defensive structure set. Mm. And that's where we get caught out. That's why we had slow transition and slow ball movement. We, we, it, it, and what The infuriating thing about it is, is like we don't have faith in the kids to do it. We have short memories. Rochelle last year in the first six rounds was averaging 20 touches per game. And I, I forgot what it was. It was either like between eight and 12 centre bounce attendances. So I just don't understand why we haven't looked at more dynamic midfield options. And I think, you know what, I, in, a, in a sadistic way, I hope we get found out this week if we go with the same inane midfield mm. and people really think, oh, shit, something's wrong here. Because if anyone's going to kill us, it's free man. Look how they torched uh, yeah. Brisbane over there. Yeah. So, anyway, and that's the, enough ranting for me. And <laughs> probably the other thing, I mean, very sensible thoughts, obviously. But, um, you know, the other thing is, um, yeah, like we already know um, what we're getting with that midfield. And, uh, you know, they're going to come up against it this week with that younger midfield, like you said. Um I forgot what I was going with. Well, I've, got a, I've actually got a, I've got a quick question, and that is, uh, you know, it's happening in the live chat right now, and it's been happening uh, on the internet. But you know, few people aren't too happy with this Nixie extension happening so soon, and a lot of people are saying the name Nathan Buckley. What's your mm-hmm. thoughts on that, Nuz? Well, the, the, just to appease people, it was always going to happen. Like when we spoke to Tim. You could just tell, like, Nix was going to be the guy. There's no way we weren't signing him. Um, 
word is that if he wanted three, we gave him two, and that might be why there's a delay. Mm-hmm. So we just we almost were in a, in a bit of a, a, a pickle because we couldn't not sign him. Mm. Otherwise, we had to let him go early. It's just oh, it's just how the footy world works. You know those, those secret handshakes that happen. And you know what? Kudos to us and, and keeping our word. Obviously, we have to know if there's other people out there to coach, and there aren't that many options. That's and right. it's funny that you mentioned Nathan Buckley because he's probably one of the few that we really need because the other alternatives are just new coaches again. Do you, think he's the type, do you think he's the type of personality to come to, a, like, the team who we have now? Like, I mean, yep. most of those players I, I are still so. going to be there in two years, apart from maybe some of the older blokes. But do you think that he's the kind of guy that can kind of carry on what Nick's has been doing while also giving them uh, something fresh? Well, look, I think so. Like, by then, don't forget, they're going to have five or six years of Nick's game plan instilled in them. The only issue is sometimes with a new coach, and this is where people – you know, need to think about, oh, instead of calling for Nix's head straight away. You know, they've trained for five or six years, and how long does it take to get a new system in play? Usually it takes a, a younger squad some time, two, three years. It can take an older squad lesser time because they're more experienced and they've done it before, and blah, 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 like Collingwood with McRae. Well, but and I think historically, yeah, with, with Nathan, historically speaking, it's two or three years. And Nathan Buckley, I'm sure he's learned a lot since he left, but he did leave Collingwood and they were playing pretty insipid football under him. Yeah. There's a lot mm. of chip to chip. In a, in a way, exactly. it's a little so bit he might not sad. be the answer. A little bit sad because Collingwood used to be a really good fantasy team and they're useless now. <laughs> I, think the, <laughs> I think the thing but, but before I go, I've got yeah, to yeah. Look to, uh, shoot off just quickly. You're right. But before I go, I'm just going to play devil's advocate and, you know, Pandora's box sort of thing here. The only thing we can do to create change instead of just calling for Nix's head, because that's not going to happen, we're not going to fire him straight away, is changing the assistant coaches. And at least by doing that and putting in experience in the assistant coaches box, because we have one of the least experienced coach in the box since Raheely left, then we'll know what Nix is about. Because every coach needs some help. You know, every coach, they need a second hand. Even Clarkson has Todd Viney. He might not be a coach, but he has his right-hand man doing all the stuff behind the scenes. You know, coaches aren't alone in this, but the mix isn't working. We've seen that. We've gone backwards a little bit. If we change the coaches and we're still shitting the bed, then we know we need to move on from Nick's. So the first port of call is getting new assistant coaches. Yep. We have to. We just must. And I would have thought the one positive about signing early is that it should make him feel more comfortable to make bolder selection like commitments. So instead of just having to play to, oh, I better get to finals, otherwise I won't get a contract, it should free him up to go, I will pick some of the youngsters to start building for the future instead of playing for the present. Well, you hope so, but it doesn't look that way. Not in the short term, it doesn't look that way, no. Uh, no. Well, we can only hope that, uh, yes, maybe we do get found out this week, Nuz, and maybe uh, Nick's head explodes and um, we patch it back together Frankenstein style and he, he, uh, his Look, brain starts working. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Unlike mine, no, I'm, uh, I'm definitely um, – I don't do live uh, because I'll start getting all stuttery and stuff, so I've got to go. But, um, no, look, I, I love Nick's. I love what Nick's has done. But I just think he needs to be bolder, be braver, don't doubt yourself or your ability, and get some extra bloody help in there. You know, Jack Homption is, is, you know, bless his soul, he tries hard, but it's his first year as defensive coach with an inexperienced team. We need a proper, like Justin Leppage style, Blake Carousella, you know, assistant coaches to help Nixie. Mm-hmm. And, then we'll, and then we'll know the answer. The yeah. time is now, Daddy. Time is now. <laughs> hey, see you guys. Thanks, Nuz. Nice. Thanks, Nuz. Nice. See you, Nuz. Catch ya. Like Izzy, Izzy, Izzy. Like so uh, Van Burley needs to go. The very yes. More more for that. Like the very experienced Nuz said, uh, you get stuttery when you're live. I lost my train of thought during that, uh, but <laughs> I remember what I was thinking. It was you know after only two weeks, the whole media team, like the media around the country, are already calling out our midfield. So it hasn't taken long for everyone to cotton on to what's going on there, but. Um, also, just on Buckley, like my, I've said this on online, but my thoughts on Buckley is that, you know, it, it's easy enough to see 
how well Collingwood did when he left, um, but also in that documentary, the one that about Collingwood that they had um, when he was sort of like you know getting him back to being a, a reasonable team. Like for me, he seemed like someone who learnt how to be a good bloke. Like I, I, it felt like he was very much like my way or the highway early on, and it wasn't working. And he had to learn to be better. To and like that's fine. I'm all for people's learning journey, but like I'd want him to come in and be naturally like have that balance that someone like a Craig McRae seems to have. Um, you know, the balance of ruthlessness and being a good guy, like, so you can win over the players, but also they understand where you're coming from when you need to drop them and stuff. Well, but I we've got the Nick's other. Had that. It seems like it's the other end of the spectrum with Nick's. Like, he's the good guy, he's won them over, they will like him, but he won't make those tough calls. And they won't appreciate when he does because it will come out of nowhere, kind mm. of thing. I mm. thought we, you know, we kind of saw that from him at the beginning. And it can't, like, you know, as I said last week, we saw it in the Making a Mark documentary. Like, he did kind of at that time where the midfield was a bit slow and uh, they weren't playing defensive footy, he kind of did lay into them. We all saw yeah. it. So where, like, where is that kind of pressure um, and attitude gone, I wonder? Yeah. You Who don't. knows? Who knows? Um, Sam's got to do his segment. Yeah. Oh, I've Shoot. forgotten about it. I've <laughs> only got bads. How long have we been, how long have we been going for, Sam? Oh, it feels like a while. Ages. Uh, yeah, about, <laughs> a, about an hour. Into social media in a minute, but... Um, do you want to hit your bad button? Yeah, I've only got bad. Sorry, <laughs> everybody, if you were hoping for some positivity. Footwear sacrificed at half price and equipment slashed to half price. Rowan Jarman's huge half price sale. Don't miss it. I think me saying hit your bad button is a bad. I probably won't say that again on live. Hit your bad button. Pod- podcast. <laughs> no one wants to see you hit your bad button on no, the podcast. Probably not. No, probably not. I uh, just want to quickly apologise and we obviously can't do that again tonight for not playing Aaron's audio during the podcast last week. So sorry about that, Aaron. I did I did put it in the podcast, but uh, we forgot about that. Uh, why was the clock so big on the big screen? Oh, yeah. Really yeah. shut me off. I could really see the time. I could not see how long <laughs> it had gone in the quarter, but I could see the time of day it was. Especially down the, uh, the, the southern end, that big, those big screens down that end, the clock was huge. I have no idea why. Uh, yeah, and didn't um, Adrian send us a message um, during the game or after the game saying why didn't they have the goals and points Yeah, they just listed? had the score. They just had the total, total score, score, which yeah. – I did notice but didn't realise what was happening at the time. Like, I was just like, oh, that's weird. Like, I don't really know yeah. how many things we need to get to win this. Yeah. I mean, I did, but you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it took me ages to figure it out. Yeah, like Tom said, the quality on the big screen was awful as well. Yeah, I don't know what they've done with those screens, but they did look way shitter than they normally do. But mm. don't worry, Tom, we've got words going through the light towers. So, excellent. Well, that's going to rescue everything. <laughs> how, go- how good was that? I should have put that in the goods. Uh, score review system. I know we've already gone through that and how many times we uh, had to get reviews for points uh, when we couldn't get one last year for a clear-cut goal. <laughs> uh, and the only other bad thing uh, was the Crow Show. Did anyone tune oh. in? Oh my God, that's copping some flack. Dear me. Uh, that was terrible. Tell us more. I haven't seen it. Oh, So it was just a like fake backdrop. Um, News Corp reporter and Graham Corns taking calls and talking. They talked to Chris Burgess. Um, they just talked through the game, but it was just boring. Like, you so know, probably people think this is boring too. But so <laughs> it's just pretty much uh, just a normal radio station, but with a crow's vent. Is y- that right? Well, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. And like, no one's going to watch that and think they're going to get any sort of like you know unbiased opinions coming through because it's clearly a, a crow's you know crow's production. Yeah. So. Yeah, pretty poor. I, I would have thought most people were going to be pretty disappointed. They're not getting. <laughs> I actually did like that. Um, I didn't watch the whole thing because I couldn't handle it, but. I did like that they had to get the glum players to come and chat to them. Mm. Uh, that that actually, I didn't mind that because, you know, they kind of did have to front up to, you know, the media, the Crows media right after that shit came. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really hear, uh, listen to any of the interviews, but um, yeah, Lockie in- Murphy didn't look very yeah. happy. <laughs> he didn't, did he? Yes, he just said Port supporting Sky News host. She, does she support the cr- Port? I don't know, but she is a Sky News journalist, but I don't, I don't really like. And uh, I know a few people came at me and said, you know, she's not one of those right-wing opinionated Sky News people, but isn't it bad enough that she's on Sky News? Oh, and Vardy just said the hostess referred to the coach as Nix. Yeah, she referred to everybody with their last name. Like mm. when, when, ref- when talking to them as well, it was really weird. Yeah. It's like she had no idea who they were. She was just reading off a page. Yeah, look, um, I know that I'm not blonde and hot uh, Adelaide Crows, but you could have asked me. I would have <laughs> done it. 
I also know that I'm not either. <laughs> <laughs> you could have done it too, Ben. You would have been better than Cornsy. Or Bob Francis Maybe. down there. Adelaide Crows, if you're listening, Jeez. and uh, this doesn't go well, me and Ben can take it, you see. <laughs> Didn't like that reference. Me and, me and Ben could take the, uh, Get out the abuse, it. I think. Yeah, yeah. Because um, <laughs> we're not associated, really. Mm. You know, we're just one of you. Yeah. Mm. Yep. I'll just keep it level-headed. That's it. <laughs> oh, I don't have any more bads. That's it. So we're getting we... to social media. Are we ready for that? Vardy just said Graham Corn said Smith played well on that too. Yeah, oh. Andrew, Andrew Jarman said that today on the they afternoon show as well. And I was like, okay, are you watching Jars? Mm. Like, okay, he's a good bloke. That's fine. But come on, mate. Even Brody said it himself on Channel 10 News. Did he come on and apologise again? He did. Did he? He did. Yeah, right. I've, again, I'd play it, but I can't pull it up. I actually Somewhere. sent a text message to Graham and Monique. And no, they, actually, I can pull it off. They didn't reply. I said, all I can say is it would appear the club have believed their, hi- their own hype and drunk their own bathwater. We're expecting to suddenly be able to deliver the fo- to the forward line of the same midfield setup that couldn't get it done in previous years, and we won't change it next week. We See, pretty that was much too controversial. That. They wouldn't have wanted that. No, nah, but that would have been like pretty light on, I assume, yeah, compared probably. to some of the stuff they would have got. Tom said Ben would have asked for players' opinions on various fruits. And fair enough. <laughs> and, You'd and rather hear that. And what is wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, nothing. It's probably more. It's probably better than what they did talk about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you doing social media? Yeah. I should have found that. First. Yeah, I was trying to, but you oh, slapped sorry. my hand away. Yeah, I did. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Out of bounds. Now this isn't really social media, but I just wanted to kick off with uh, a little bit of um, rivalry going on between a couple of podcasts at the moment, um, and maybe more podcasts, we don't know yet, but uh, here we crow, you may have remen- remembered last week we, uh, I wasn't here, but I listened, believe it or not. Did you actually? I listened to a podcast. Wow, well done. And, uh, <laughs> and I heard uh, us talking about Phoenix and his goal kicking prowess, yeah. or... Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. And he's returned serve on his podcast he that has. you made me listen to the start of. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where he um, has thrown down the gauntlet to Huey Crow um, to have a goal kick. To goal kick and comp. Yeah. Kate. Kate and, the, Kate ran- and the, the random yeah. footballer from Strathalban. The ra- yeah. Ben. Some footballer from Strathalban who he doesn't <laughs> realise is a co host. I don't think. <laughs> um, to be and fair, I missed a few episodes last year. <laughs> so <laughs> that and, you know, and they threw some shade at Crojack, which, uh, you know, I'd, I'm not going to speak for the Crojack, but I'd be pretty fired up if I was them and get the, kick, the kicking boots. I don't know, Elodie happens to play nines. Mm. Um, Jade might uh, do that a bit sometimes as well. So who knows? There could be a bit of a goal kicking comp. This all came from the fact that Phoenix thinks he can kick goals that the Crows should have kicked in games. And I reckon, um, I reckon he, could have, uh, he could actually probably kick a few that we missed uh, this this week, to be honest. And yeah, I yeah, don't would. disagree. But I did challenge him. I said, look, oh, we're, we're all for this, um, but you have to name all four hosts of Here We Crow pod, and uh, he didn't do that. So I guess we're out, Phoenix. Sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, yeah, I definitely would love to get involved in that at some point. I think judging by how hard it is just to get the four of us together, I reckon it'll be an interesting challenge to get <laughs> multiple podcasts. Uh, we'll see how we go. Yeah. Yes. Do we want to hear this uh, Brody Smith apology? Was it? Another From today? One. Is this his yeah. second apology Brody in two Smith weeks? has admitted to 10 News first. His start to the season has not been good enough. Ahead of game 250, Smith is out to redeem himself and brush off what he's describing as the worst kick of his life. <laughs> <laughs> Through 249 games of penetrating and precise kicking, Brody Smith can't ever recall a shake this bad. Oh, boy. This is close to a miss as I've seen. It almost. Oh, I would have just walked off. It's honestly disbelief. I just couldn't believe um, that I'd just done that. And as I said, I was I was having a poor night, so it's sort of um, all compacts. And um, yeah, you feel pretty bad about yourself, that's for sure. The miss kick, an unfortunate underline right on what's in front of been danger a as well. Start to the season <laughs> for Smith. Yeah, the weekend was well below par for myself, and um, yeah, fully aware of that, and know that I have to have to be better going forward. So um, I've, I've had bad games in the past. I'm sure I haven't going forward. Any talk he may be past well, his You prime. said that last week, Brody. I think the thing is, like, I don't want someone like Brody to be like hung out to dry in the media every week and have to front up and apologise on you know, on the news. Like, He needs to make a call at some point, though, because the club's <laughs> clearly not going to. Well, mm. yeah. 
I yeah. mean, if it continues on that way, hopefully he can turn it around um, and, you know, play more good game. He did flag that he might play more bad games in the future, though, which is <laughs> you'd hope not. <laughs> oh, we just had a very, very late uh, Dirk message come through. Oh, yeah. Just then. Hit it. Hi. <laughs> I don't really have much to say about the match. I'm sure you experts have got that covered. Ah, experts. experts. <laughs> yeah. Especially Pete and that almost footy legend from Strath. <laughs> That's a good call. <laughs> we were just talking about that. Just a thought from the Here We Crow community. How is it that you now broadcast from a pub but have scrapped the cool drink segment? Have you been cut off? Please bring it back. <laughs> and also, how am I meant to remember all the daggy songs no one talks about without Lauren's song selection? It's true. I just heard I like your smile at Cole's Furl and people were actually singing in the aisles. So please bring back a music segment in some guys. Speaking <sighs> okay. of music and football, were we? I really appreciated the brief history of decent pubs in Van Diemen's Land segment last week <laughs> and had to, a question to ask. I'm heading to Hobart for Beth Orton and the Kangaroos oh, match. Oh, Beth Orton. Mm. I was looking forward to both, but with more than – with more just want to enjoy at least one. So want to know how the Odeon is and also, oh, there's more message coming. I shouldn't have started reading this ah. straight away. You can see him typing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if there's anything. Live podcast, people. Is did, there anything on Twitter? Oh, yeah. Dino, uh, Essendon and Nuffy got in contact with us. How does it feel to be two games into the year and know you're cooked? <laughs> Welcome to the world Don's fans live in. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it feels great, mate. Um, <laughs> what else? Uh, Bozza said he might have to do my selections in the mum's truck tonight. And did we get his nudes on the Here We Crow phone? I'm um, putting them together and putting them in a TikTok slideshow. Well, not that Lauren shared with us anyway. No, I'm keeping them for myself. They're in the wank bank, Bozza. <laughs> <laughs> um, Vardy <laughs> said, I trimmed my Muraya hedges today, Ben. That sounds phallic. Yeah, right. And didn't trim his Muraya? Mar- yeah. I mean, it looks yep. like a Muraya. Nice. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just it would reading be a his word. It would be a Moran. Yeah. Yes. If I trimmed my Moran hedges, I wouldn't be bringing it up on the podcast. Be <laughs> one that's slightly too frost tender for me to grow in Strathalbyn. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, nice, nice hedging plant. Yeah. A few people are now. Dirk's Dirk's on, finished. Dirk started something here though because uh, Kate wants us to bring back the music too. Now yeah. there will be music occasionally, but n- probably not too often because of the YouTube yeah, thing. Yeah, we can't do it it's on YouTube, Kate. That's why we sort of half decided to scrap it. But if there's ever a night where we're not live streaming, we'll do some music. Yeah. Uh, so I want to know how the Odeon is and also is it walkable from Sandy Bay? Many thanks and best wishes for this week. Do something, Daddy. Oh, and congrats to Lockie Murphy. <laughs> Only 50 more games and he'll turn into Tom Stewart. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> That's uh, a good call. The Odeon is walkable from Sandy Bay, but it is a fair trek. Um, I did go to and see a couple of things at the Odeon while I was down there. It's it's actually a reasonably nice venue. It's pretty old. Um but, yeah, if you're going to watch, yeah, like we said last week, the, the there's not a lot of sports bars down there if you're looking for somewhere to – oh, no, he, he said he's going for the Kangaroos match. So, yeah. Anyway. And I do have my Winston T-shirt on. You are. You do have your Winston T-shirt on, which is, yeah, easily the best pub in Hobart if anyone else is going down there. What else we got? Uh, these are kind of from uh, a couple of days ago now because I didn't really put out a call for Twitter tonight. But uh, Joel Constable said to, in response to me, imagine if the Crows had players who knew when their time was up. Mm-hmm. Brody mm-hmm. would be a member of Here We Crow by now and Rory would have two functional eyes. <laughs> yes. Wow. Uh, on Instagram, Patrick Sanderman said, maybe we need another camp. <laughs> oh, shit. I didn't actually read that before I read that out. <laughs> we have had uh, camp. We, it seems like we've had camp light. Camp Light. Yeah, Yeah, maybe. That's Uh, what we'll refer to it as from now on. Yoshi Shield, 23. If Flippin' Smithers is still in next week with the crying emoji. (laughs) Next week or this week? Because I've got bad news for you, pal. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, sorry. Uh, The AJ Porter. Smithers needs to be dropped. He's never looked worse. And for fuck's sake, use the ball, boys. Yeah. Mm. Daniel Altman. Fog looks heavy, uninterested, and doesn't chase opposition like Burjo or other bigs. Yeah. I do. It like Fog's always like had that little bit of laziness about him. I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah, it's obviously showing up with how quickly the ball's coming out of our Ford Fifty these days. If he's going to be lazy, he can at least have the side head to it, like Scott Hodges. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Gaff, he's got that too. 
Uh, Bozza, my goodness me, thanks for those two picks. Can't wait for the 250th rollout press this week. You've nailed it, Bozza. Mm. And the two picks were uh, Brody Smith and Tom Stewart. <laughs> well, we've got some uh, selections from Bozza. I was just going to ask. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we yes. can just wait. Just give, a me a, give me a second, Lauren. We oh, need yep. to put the specials. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. He's uh, he's actually labelled this one okay. ra- round zero and three. Okay. Uh, so can't wait to hear this. Good evening, people. Round three from the sauna. How exciting. Nothing much to be said about last week, apart from we pretty much have the uh, worst skills in the competition at the moment after pretty much oh, I watched the rest of the games and I couldn't see anyone as bad as us, which is a bit of a worry. So 0-3 and three is probably a given this week, especially with Luke Jackson jumping all over Rob all day. <laughs> um, if we don't win, I'd say September for the eighth year in a row is pretty much out of the question. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six changes, including the sub, Berry, Smith, Pedler, Four, Ned and Jones out. Two de- debutants, Dowling and Curtin, Hamill and Curvis Cook, and then Chuck and Jones back on the subs bench. Hopefully it gives them a wake-up call like it did last year. That's about it, guys. Thanks again. Speak to you soon. Thanks, Bozza. As Oof. usual, Bozza would love to see it. Can't see it. <laughs> yeah, every time we just get Bozza's selections, we're like, yes, please, do it. How I've do we get <laughs> Bozza in a room with the coaches? I, I, yeah, I, just, <laughs> I just commented on a... Um, an, Twitter, I'm, just, I'm still calling it Twitter, fuck Elon. Um, <laughs> there, a post um, that from Baron Von Crow um, about how like how likely it would be that we only see the one change, which would be like Peddler, out Peddler in... Um, like Hamill. Hamill or something, whatever. <laughs> I can't remember who he said, but I, I absolutely agree. Like, I can see us making that one change. Yeah, Peddler out, McHenry in as a, um, into the, the first 22. And then really. Hamill sub. Yeah, I'm also maybe. Oof, that would be so bad. I, if that's what happens, I would I'm almost not set watch. my watch to that happening. <laughs> I'm not going to watch if that's what happens because that we are going to get absolutely murdered. I drop Mc, uh, Murphy before Peddler. Like, come on. I know that Frio. Oh, actually, we're not going into that yet, are we? Yeah, yeah. Let's go take, into it. Take <laughs> Bozzy's no, sauna picture off the screen. Uh, can you get? Aaron, <laughs> we got Aaron's. Um, oh, Aaron's as well. Yeah. Yep. I oh, forget that this week. We need a picture for Aaron. Yeah, I was going to do it and then I ran out of time. Aaron, Aaron can send you send us, us a, a picture? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> send us a photo of you, Aaron, and we'll put it up. It can be an AI picture if you want. This one that Bozza sent's a bit weird. Have you screened this? Uh, no, I haven't. Hope, well, I don't, Aaron's not much of a swearer. So no, I no, think, Aaron doesn't swear. I think it'll be fine. And anyway, we've sworn way. All right, here. Aaron from <laughs> Iowa here. I try to keep these under a minute, so though there's numerous things we could talk about, I'm just going to go with... One big thing I kind of talked about in the Discord too, but just the midfield just doesn't have enough going forward. It feels like it's just not there, and I don't. It's not as much as skill as it is talent. Like it wasn't as much airs this year, this week. It looked like it just looked like they were slow. There wasn't enough spread. They, Aaron from Iowa can the say the service it, was bad, and maybe that's because <laughs> there wasn't enough spread there because they were slow. But it just doesn't seem like there's enough juice there. I think you guys have talked about it before. A lot of really similar players, and they're not getting it outside. And um, you just can't win. All of our clearances are super ineffectual. They don't do anything. You know, we win a clearance, and it goes 15 y- yards, 15 meters, and it's a turnover with an intercept mark or a fumble or yeah. just a bad kick into 50. So. I don't know, that's where I think things have got to change. Geelong looked really good. I didn't think we played horrible on Mike against Gold Coast for the first three quarters, but um, yeah, it's just kind of disappointing because I thought we were going to be further along than we look right now, and hopefully they can shore some things up, put some new blood in there, um, get some get some more speed or something, get into the outside in there. But uh, yeah, it's just not looking good going forward right now, especially from the midfield. So, all right, cheers, go Crows. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. He's always very, he's very sensible. He knows his stuff. Yes. I like Aaron. We have he's a sensible good. crow and a sensible yank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I Thanks, don't know Aaron. if that's offensive or not, so sorry if it is Aaron from Iowa. Can we have some Probably more offensive that it uh, rhymed with your bank and wank before and before. Thanks for pointing that out, Ben. Can we have some predictions in the chat? I oh, want to see what people think is going to happen this weekend, even though you've all said we're going to get torched. Oh. Well, while you do that, can we start talking about the game this week? Yeah. Frio, we got another Friday night, another primetime game. 
Ben, do you uh, have your usual run of stats? Uh, if you mean by usual, limited, yes, I've got my usual. Yeah, that's um, fine. So a bit of a compare the pair. So we talked about our, um, yeah, goal efficiency before. I said Frio are coming first for that. And we're last for disposal efficiency and Frio are currently second for that. So all signs lead to, yeah, some real positive action for us this weekend. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's the, one positive <laughs> <laughs> the, one, the one positive is... Um, they did play North, didn't they? And they yeah. Yeah. were getting beaten by them for a while. Maybe they can yeah. get beaten by us for a whole game. I and don't they know. Kicked eight in a row, and yeah, took yeah. Off well, from they there. might not. They've started slowly two games in a row, so yeah. Um, yeah. you can't always do that. You can't always get back into games. So um, we we'll, we probably will have them on the co- like contested side, but it does worry me how well they spread. Like Brayshaw is almost a more outside than inside midfielder now, so. Mm. They do have that spread, and Hayden Young's quite dynamic and has a really good kick. So, and their ruckman is quite versatile and dynamic. Absolutely dominating. At and the I moment think too. Fremantle. I don't know if they'll bring Darcy or whether they should bring Darcy back in when he's fit. Like they seem to have a. They signed him up for like seven years, didn't they? They mm. did. It's a, <laughs> they've got a very strange list. Like they said, we'll do exactly the opposite to the Crows, and we will just sign up to expensive ruckman for the rest of our lives yeah yeah <laughs> um whereas <laughs> yeah we, we don't want anyone other than rob can we have darcy oh no. i'm not sure we could do like the grundy deal like what? <laughs> Take sydney got him books. for nothing so yeah that's right yeah. um so it's not without its challenges this weekend i just say that. can't see how we get it done with like our midfield's best is not good enough to beat their midfield i think it's like we've got to expect our midfield to play out of their skin to get enough of the ball forward if we get it forward like better than we did against Geelong then we're a chance but yeah. without I, that I just can't see how again, we do I it. reckon it's not so much ju- yeah just midfield it's more we can't let them just get a free run from yeah. one end to the other last year for you and all were pretty bad and that was because they were chipping it around really slow ball movement what they've tried to change this year is go really fast mm. and that's what's given them success so we can't let them have that fast movement and we need to have fast movement. The When they were losing to North Melbourne was when North, you know, everyone loves the old North Bowl. That's you know, um, not hammered on enough at every freaking North game, is it? So when they played that really fast ball, they got in behind Frio's defence and they did kick a lot of goals. It's just that North, you know, that North are North, so they can't keep it up for a whole game. Mm. So... We need to be brave with how we move the ball and move fast and there's a chance for us to expose their defence. They've got a pretty dynamic defence too. I, they might not be really like big names, but I think their defence is pretty solid really. Yeah, it's interesting. They've got um, Luke Ryan. So Pierce, uh, Pierce is their main stopper. Yeah. Um, and he's, Co- Cox he's, is injured. He was playing forward yeah, though. He wasn't yeah, getting he a was. spot in their defence. So yeah. um, Then there's Jordan, Jordan Clark, Clark who... Yeah. Like more of a user than a stopper. Yeah, um, yeah. It's it's an interesting backline. Mm. I don't know. I, th- I don't I f- think it's a bad backline. No, I think it's not impenetrable though. No, no. So well, not with Baby John. No, no. Well, that's right. It's Baby so John. Yeah. I did say last week that you know Friday night would kind of he'd prove how he can play in the nice conditions. Mm. He was okay. Copped a couple of votes. Yeah, I think I was pretty. I was pretty pleased with him, especially in the first half. I mm. think he was he was great. Um, it, he he looked more dynamic than Fogg did. Yep. In my mind, yeah, even so takes to yeah, a point. Well, to be honest, is injured, isn't he? Hey, Are um, we going to take him to Frio? Yeah, <laughs> well, maybe main? maybe that'll be the only other change we make. Yeah, it's hard so what, to say. So what are the changes? What are we What are we saying? I know we got Boz as six. I, well, I, I was agreed. just going to say, sorry. Um, yeah. Are we going to put a hard tag on Sarong? Like, is that going to be... Nah, they will let him go. Something we'll do, because surely yeah. we can't. I'm making him captain this week. <laughs> I wish oh, I had him. Yeah, I had him all too. pre-season and then I let... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no. So if I Because if I had him, I'd want him to do good. <laughs> so I'm glad oh, I yeah, don't. Oh, that's true. You know? Yeah, I don't like doing that. Yeah. That's true. Ben doesn't mind it, though. He's right. also considering butters, and he's already got Rosie. So he's I, basically no, I said, no, I said I didn't want to have butters. He, pl- <laughs> he seems... <laughs> Too inconsistent. <laughs> I think, like I said earlier, Baron, uh, that Baron von Crow posted that it would be McHenry in for Pedler 
and I th- and I don't agree with that one bit, but that's what will happen. And it will be if Walker doesn't pull up, it will be like Walker for Gollum or something. I reckon it will be <sighs> Barry dropped and um, Pedler will be sub. Mm. I reckon they'll bring McHenry in and Pedler sub. That could happen. Ugh, that's gross. That could also happen. Ben, what do you think? I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. I'm on. The, I'm on the old Nankervis train, but that doesn't, yeah. there's not, really not a lot of word about that. They're not so. bringing him in without dropping Smith. Yeah. Probably are they? Young yeah. Bean is in the chat saying Smith out. Please, I'm begging. I need to repeat this. He is playing. Yeah, he is sorry, selected. He so is in, mate. He's doing the press it tomorrow. Our uh, friend of the pod, Boz, just posted not long ago that uh, from the. Jack Homps presser from today. Smith's fine. He's got a lot of experience and he's really excited for it this week for his two hundred fiftieth, and we are as well. I would have been. I would have liked him to be excited for the first two games this season as well. That would have been good. <laughs> no, he's just he's just pushing for his two fiftieth. Yeah. Let's see if he can go three. Do you think he's feeling the pressure of like the two fiftieth coming up? Well, <laughs> if he is, it's not good enough. <laughs> see what sensible wrote. I still think Mackesy will come good soon. Pick six, <laughs> Sarong pick eight. That's oh. just so depressing, isn't it? I hate Please. seeing Sarong running around getting forty touches when we uh, <laughs> and we were linked to him too. Country Vic player, like just we shouldn't talk about. This anymore it's depressing <sighs> so who do depressing. we think will win and by how much ben sorry oh, sorry you sorry interrupted him he was watching netflix <laughs> yeah. so i was just drifting just sorry um well first week they hadn't let me down i gave him a tip um last week feeling pretty optimistic still 30 point win for against geelong this week I've just got this scaric little bit of optimism <laughs> that I'm holding on to. God, no. <laughs> Fremantle are Fremantle. That if we think we're a frustrating club, imagine being a Fremantle supporter. Oh, yeah. So then, you know, they're flying 2-0. But, you know, we're due a win, they're due a loss. Um, Oof, that's clutching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was it, did, I, did I not say scaric? What, yeah. year, um, what, year, <laughs> so what year did they come into the league? 95, was it? I think so, yeah. So they're only... Three years behind us in premiership drought. Ben, I went with this logic. Yeah, true. Yeah, but <laughs> their drought, they, it never Shut rained. Up, Dad. <laughs> ben, I went with this logic in my tips this week uh, for Collingwood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it didn't work for me. No. <laughs> well, we'll see how it goes for me. So um, I'm going to say a three point oh. nail biting win. Oh, God. It's going to make us oh. all have anxiety attacks. Oh. Thanks, Ben. No, well, all you guys are going to go with a loss. I might as well do something different. Lauren? Yeah. Uh, I want them to pump us by 150 points. <laughs> <laughs> look at Lauren. She's like you, oh, usually the positive one. <laughs> like, nah, look, it, I, I'm done. I'm over it. Hey, like <laughs> that Friday night was just like so shit. I could not uh, – halfway through the third quarter, I was not even paying attention. Like yeah. it was just – It was. It was just I so had my head in my hands. <laughs> yeah. Put it this way. We better pull something out this week because if I don't see something happen – Oh, I'll be ripable. If we play like we did last week with the fumbles and the mistakes, and everything, I can't see us getting within 40 points of Frio. Um, but I do think we'll tighten up a little bit. Hopefully, I'm not confident in saying that, but I think it'll be like a 25 point Frio win. Sam? Uh, yeah, Frio to win, especially if we don't. Frio are going to be premiers, aren't they? Uh, I, was made, I, made that, <laughs> Flag I said that last year. <laughs> I wish I'd said it this year. At least it'll look a little bit smarter. Uh, yeah, Frio by thirty-two. Um, I don't see us getting close if we if we play like we did against Geelong over there. Big ground. They don't play it well with their midfield. We will lose. Any um, thoughts from the chat that you want to share? Sam, uh, they're all we just saying up? we're going to get spanked. Some want us <laughs> want us to get spanked. Uh, Quirky says the only thing we have not we've got going for us is Fremantle's ability to disappoint their fans. Um, <laughs> Precisely. Uh, Issy, that was my point. Yeah. <laughs> Issy said uh, Sarong wouldn't have become the player with us, though. We wouldn't have developed him, which is a sober True. point. It'd be quite a serviceable half-forward flank. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Just along the Ned McHenry trajectory. <laughs> oh, we, we've developed him really well. What do you, th- you know, He's got a media career. He fishes. Yeah. and <laughs> He's got a boat. <laughs> yeah, he's doing all right. Ned, Edward McKenna. Oh, do you know what I was going to bring up in my bads too? Is It was Rowie uh, chirping on the radio tonight because, you know, he's he's quite – no, this, don't take this in the wrong way if anyone's religious in the chat. But he, he's very adamant that he's not commentating this Friday because it's Good Friday and he will be out on the boat and that's what he does on Good Friday and he told Five to Blay 
I'm not commentating. Okay. Yeah, good oh. on you, Rui. <laughs> Enjoy the boat, mate. <laughs> didn't, didn't know boat trips were such a religious. Well, yeah, thing. that's what I thought too. It's like, oh no, I'm going to spend the day with my family at home. But what's it's he, like, no, what's he like feeding the family with fish and bread when he gets home or something? <laughs> yeah. Is that like the religious yeah. part? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. So. Dan was very keen for us to just quickly mention fantasy. Oh, no. no. But Dan, you're hosting. Let's end this now. So, oh, let's g- last week I got <laughs> called I got called the buy. I got called the buy. So I said to Lauren in our private chat, I'm going to do everything in my power to take Ben down this week so I can um, bring it up in the pod. Well, let's just say Ben was right. Unfortunately, I am the buy. And <laughs> let's just say I carried about $500,000 of cash because <laughs> I couldn't spend it. I was slipped down to 19th on the fantasy ladder and my team is basically as shot as the crows are right now. <laughs> so yeah. but, good times. Um, last week though, Nathan scored a 19-11. That's impressive out of 18 players. Mm. <laughs> really good. Yeah, shut up. That was the guy I played, wasn't it? Nathan Whoa. beat me, I think. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so thanks for that, Nathan. Yeah. So, yep. Get away from it. We got the showdown this week, though. <laughs> Sam, I'm up against you. I've, I've gotten over the bye and now it's <laughs> up to Sam. Uh, yeah, no, I'm going to beat you this week. I'm confident. Sarong is going to score 170 and I'm going to have him the captain. That's not impossible that I couldn't have Sarong in my team, too. What? Did you get him? He has a lot of money. I haven't finalised oh, things. I do have a lot of at, money. Look at you com- copying me. Typical Ben. Yep, I'm copying How do you have so everything much money? you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I ditched Ollie Wines to get Jeremy Sharp last week. Okay. Are you going to try to win the highlights? And so by saving all that money, I only lost 10 points, but I've got a lot of cash to spend this week. Okay. All right. We I've need got to a bit in my now. bank too. Do you? No yeah. fantasy. Yeah. That's Nearly enough. 200K. No one cares. Well, I've got no a shit nice. team and no money, so what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I did come in from about 16,000th into about 4,000, so I was happy oh, this week. I tell you what, day cost, you let down. So glad I put the C on your name, you idiot. Yeah, he's anyway, been, he's that's been very quiet. <laughs> that'll do. You needed a VC. Do we talk Lauren through the uh, VC loophole? I know. Oh, what's the loophole? <laughs> your VC early players that you want to make captain that are early in the round because then you can just put your captain on someone you prefer. So this week, if you put a VC on someone early, you can captain any of your buy players. Mm hmm. And, it, and you'll be show. fine to get a captaincy <laughs> score. Okay. Ben would love to go through this I right think now. That's I spent five minutes The person on it. I was playing this week, uh, Darren, actually did that. And I I was fooled because I looked at his team and I was like, oh, his captain's got to buy it. But I didn't see that he'd put the vice captain mm. on Jordan Dawson. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. That was anyway, a I'm mighty pl- fine VC choice this week. I'm playing uh, collective mids, uh, right. Hendo, uh, from the Discord Coming this off. week. And I said to him today, I'm fucked. Well, he's he coming lost, off he? a shock loss, that's yeah. right. I don't think he lost till about round 18 or something last year. Yes, yeah. he did mention he didn't have a good week, but I don't mm. think that means anything. I think he's going to wallop me. Mm. Mm. It, mm. It's, it is quite possible. Mm. This has gone on long yeah, enough. Right, um, oh, sorry. So apologies if you're still listening to Here We Crow tonight, but thank you if you are. Um, hopefully next week will be a bit more positive. It's not looking likely based on the outset of uh, you know the outlook of our predictions <laughs> this week, but if we somehow pull off a miraculous win, hopefully it'll be a more upbeat podcast that will go a bit shorter than however long this has gone for. (laughs) Thanks, Sam. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Lauren. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, everyone that called in. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Sensible. And thank you for you for listening. Thanks for your messages. Bye-bye. Send us messages. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Bye.